Hello, my name is Rob Garner. I'm a computer programming instructor, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to use time in uh, C++. So we'll create a console application. I'm going to call it uh, time demo. And I'm going to start off just by making a uh, do another loop. So this function basically, you could put all this stuff inside of your do another loop, but um, uh, it's kind of nice to just take your question for do another, turn it into a function that returns a Boolean, and then here we'll just call this function. It'll ask the user if they want to do another. If they, if they type in Y, it'll return true, and it'll just keep looping around. So if I run this with control F5, succeeded building
you can see it's working. And the way that works is if we run it in debug mode. We're sitting here at the function call. I'll step into the. Oh, I'll step into that function. You can see that this is called to do another. We step over. Initializes do another. Puts out the prompt. Gets the input. If I put y. Do another is y. This whole expression here will now evaluate to this whole expression will evaluate to since do another is equal to y should evaluate to true. You can see do another did in fact return true. And it'll just keep looping through and asking, you know, if you want to do another until you enter a no. So simple do another loop, but with a function on the side. So now let's see, we want to, um, I'm going to move this to a uh, library so I'm, or a uh, separate function. So I'm going to add a new item. I'm going to add a CPP file for functions.cpp. And then a header file. Well, before I do that, I'll start my functions file with some includes and I don't know if I'll need the string might probably need an IO stream yeah I'll leave it in there just in case And then we'll need a header file. I'll put in an include guard. And we'll move our, we can move this function there, take it out of driver and place the function definition. In the dot C, in the functions dot CPP. And then of course the function prototype goes into functions dot H. And then we need to include functions.h both in driver and then also in functions.cpp. So 
still working. So now let's start working on using time. And time, we need to we need to be able to get uh, the the date. So let's say we want to get the time from. Um, the user, or we want to get the time from the computer. And we're going to do that with a function. And what we're going to return is um, a TM. And you might ask, what's a TM? A TM is basically a struct, which, well, it is a struct that um, stores information for um, for time in the following format. So it contains one, two, three, four, five, nine elements in this struct. And each element is an int that corresponds to second, minute, hours, days, months, year, and for a given point in time. Notice that um, the values are not necessarily just intuitive. The year is actually the year since 1900. So you have to add 1900 to the year to get the year. Um, the month is 0 through 11, not 1 through 12. So you have to add 1 to the month day to get the uh, numeric. Uh, day of the month is just normal. The um, hours, minutes, and seconds are, you know, as presented. And then, you know, of course, seconds generally 0 through 59. And then the, there's an extra second for leap seconds. And then um, there's also, you can get uh, the days and Sunday. So you can get the day of the week as a number from 0 to 6. And you can get um, the day since the 1st of January as a number from 0 to 365. And they'll also tell you if there's daylight savings times or not. So that's our time struct, and it's provided to us by the um, by uh, C++ libraries. And let's say we want to get um, a function that will get the current date time. <clears throat> Well, the first thing we actually need is that is a a time t as well. So, what's a time t? A time t um, is the is basically the number of seconds. It elapsed since zero hours, January 1, 1970. So for some reason, computers seem to think that uh, a time started on the 1st of January in 1970. Um, it's actually just a, uh, this is a, the Unix timestamp, and it's convenient because it biases you know, time more to the present and into the future, so you have more num numbers of, of seconds available into the future this way. And so... W this this is what a so a time t is basically just an integer which is number of seconds or not an integer but a a value from the representing number of seconds so actually a, a, a an integer of number of seconds so we're going to get that we're going to say time t we're going to have a um, a variable to store the raw number of seconds. And then we're going to use uh, the time this a time function. And it requires us to have a library.
And what time does is get the time from the computer and place it into a time t object of our choice. And we pass that time t object in as a pointer. So in this case, we're going to pass in the address of our time t variable here. Time will get the time from the local computer and the, or from the computer and place it into this raw time. And just to see what happens, I'm just going to temporarily see if we can output that. So I got to return a value. Let's go make this void temporarily just so that we can test this and see what happens. And we can see if I wait, one, two, three, four. Yep. You can see that um, if we wait a number of seconds, this keeps advancing number of seconds, and that's the number of seconds since 1970. So what that tells us is that when I get when we call this time function, is it, it is in fact putting a number of seconds since 1970 into this time t object. So now, that we have that, the question is how do we create, what we really want is we want to return not a void, but um, a TM. And how do we make a TM? Well, we let's make a TM called um, We need to call a function called local time. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to pass it. Once we got the number of seconds in raw time, we need to pass in a time t to local time, this function here. And what local time returns back is a pointer to that it creates a time t struct and returns it as a pointer. So just to kind of show what this looks like and just prove to you that it's a pointer, I'm going to I'm going to output this just to show you what it looks like. And what this is, this is the address of the struct it's creating. And so local time returns an address. Which means that if we want the date in it and we want the uh, variable with the date time struct, we can't assign a pointer to TM into TM. We have to dereference that. So we're going to put the asterisk to say return. I don't want you to put lo what comes back from local time into date. I want you to put 
the thing that's at that address into date. And now we can take this and we can return date and that will return the current date time. And so now we need to store that somewhere. So it, it returns a TM. Let's create a TM um, called now maybe. And then how do we display things from that time struct? Well, that struct has these elements in it. So we're going to just display some of them. And so maybe I'll see out now dot so we can do now dot tm seconds. And if you just hit a dot in Visual Studio, it'll actually bring these up. So let's do, we'll, we'll, we'll display seconds, minutes, hours, and then Let's see, we want, I think, M day, month, and then year. So we're going to call our function, get back a TM, and then look in this, this uh, TM to get those elements. And we can see Okay, the seconds is 50 seconds, the minutes is 28 minutes at 8 o'clock, which matches the time here. The day is the 28th. The month is 2. Well, it's March right now, so how is it? It's 2. Well, remember, if we looked at our documentation, it's the, the month is from 0 to 11, so it's 0 based. So you have to add 1 to get, you know, March is the third month. And then uh, the year 118, well, it's not the year 118. Um, it's actually, that's 118 plus 1900, which if you add those two together, you get, um, you get uh, 2018, so, which is the current year. So let's, um, Let's see if we can uh, make those adjustments to our program so that re it displays the time the way we'd normally s see it. So seconds, minutes, and hours are fine the way they are. Day is fine the way it is, but month you have to add one, and year you have to add 1900. And now that makes more sense. It's 8.30 and 23 seconds on the 28th of March, 2018. So that's how you use a TM struct to get uh, the time. Okay, so let's say that um, we want, you know, this works pretty well, but this is kind of a cumbersome way of displaying the date and time. Let's make a function to display the date and time. And we're going to call it, um, and we'll just make a function that returns a string. We can display it how we want.
and it'll take as an argument a tm struct and um, uh, we can use a string stream we're gonna have to include the string stream library And we'll just concatenate together um, our our date and time. So let's say we do month, and we'll put a divider in there. The day, which we don't have to adjust. In the year, of course, with the year we have to add 1900. And we'll just put a space between that and the time. The hour. minutes <clears throat> and seconds and of course the string stream you know the string stream is not a string it's a string stream and so we have to return the our string stream using our str function which will convert this into a string so now we're getting you know, month, day, year, hours, minutes, and seconds. And of course, we've got to copy our function prototype over to our .h file. And then in driver, rather than doing this, we can just see out and we'll call our function. And so we'll get a time in from the user and we'll display it. Let's see if it works. Or we'll get the current time. Uh, let's see what we had. Oh, I had a previous version of this program open. And we probably need an ENDL here. And it's displaying the time nicely. So we have a nice uh, display time function. Now another function that we might want to be able to do is ask the user for, you know, a date, and uh, and get that information. So let's make another function. This function will be to um, ask oh let's do the date ask date from user and to do this we're going to ask the user for a year a month and a day <clears throat> and so we'll So we'll output the year and then and then input a year and then we'll output month
So we get the year month day from the user, and then um, and then we have to do getting the date from a user and put it into a TM struct is not um, trivial. I have to do the following things. It's actually easiest to get um, to start off with the current date and time. So I'm going to call our current date time function to um, to get that from the computer, and then um, and then modify that date. So we'll we'll change the year to uh, equal what the user input. And we got to make some adjustments because with the TM struct, this has to be day, years from 1900. And the month has to be zero based. And then, uh, and then once we do that, you know, this TM struct won't be properly, um, it only has some of the elements um, filled out. So, if you look at the struct, you know, we've only filled some of these, it's, you know, year day, all these other values that we didn't set will, will be, well, will be local time. We need to correct that. And, um, the way we correct that is, uh, we call, um, a function called, we call make time. And what, um, you'll find out from make time is that, um, it will actually ignore weekday and year day, and it'll fix them after you call them. So, and they have an example of how you do this here in uh, um, in C++.com. And you can see after they fill the user's information, they call make time. So right after this, we have to make a call to the make time function and pass in a reference to our our TM object here and that will fix any elements that we didn't um, we didn't fill in and in fact if you for example put you know February 30th in here it'll actually correct that to March um, 2nd or whatever so this is our function to ask the user for a date and a time um, we need to add the prototype to our .h file and then how do we use that? Well, let's just call it here. And we'll ask for time and then display it and see if it works. So I'll run it with Control F5. And now we're at, it's asking us for a year. So I'll put uh, 2012 maybe month, uh, March, put it at 30, and we can see, yes, it's reporting the time. It, it You can see it took the local time and put it in there. We can do another. And it seems to be working. So that's how you can get the time from the user and make a TM out of it. Um, you know, if we wanted this to be at zeros, we could also do this and just say um, hours equals zero. You could also modify this so it asks the user for um, for those values as well. And maybe that looks a little better.
Another common function might be to add um, days to um, to a, a date. So again, we can make another time function and it'll return a TM with that um, that has the that time put in. So I'm going to make a struct. I want to pass in a, a pointer to a struct called date. And then an integer for the number of days you want to add to this um, to this to this date. So we get a date in and then we add a number of days. And um, we're going to define a, what one day is in terms of time t. Remember time t is just a number of seconds. So we could do that by saying 24 times 60 times 60's number of seconds corresponds to one day. And then um, we'll get um, a time t and then depending on how many days that we want to add to this date so we're calling make time to take this date and convert it into a um, a number of seconds and then what we'll do is add in you know the number of days that we want to add times one the number of seconds for one day and then we'll return we'll use our local time function and return and pass in that new um, time t and what this will do is it will local time will convert that back into another tm and so we'll get back a tm out of this put my prototype over to my dot h and then in driver let's see if we can use this And then we'll use our function. So we'll say now is equal to I'll make a new one. So now we're taking the days to add, we're passing it into our function along with, and uh, we need to pass in the address of our, of our struct. And then we'll see out and we'll put a prompt in here. And we'll run that and see what that looks like. So there's the current date. We're going to add um, five days. And we can see it jumped over the next month. 
and add it in. Do another, let's try another. Let's say if we did 2012, month was uh, four. We're gonna do the 29th. And we're gonna add 10 days. And it takes care of going across the day boundary and figuring out how to add it. So it, um, it works pretty well. So now that we have the ability to add dates to our date, another common thing we might want to do is figure out the difference between two dates. And so let's make a function that returns an integer, which is the number of days, and we'll call this days between dates, and we'll pass in two TMs. And we'll need that one day value. And so the first thing we're going to do is convert those two TMs to time T's. And we need to pass in, pass these in as pointers. Well, actually, rather than messing with pointers here, we could just do this. We'll pass, we'll point to them in the make time function. And then, um, so now the time t is basically just a number of seconds. So we can just say the difference is equal to, uh, let's make this two, epoch two minus epoch one. And now we have the difference And the days is just going to equal the difference divided by one day in seconds and just return days. Bring our prototype over and then let's see. We'll change this to be this in main. And let's try our function out.
and it figures out the days between. So that completes my review of how to use time. The big key is we have to use this TM struct. Um, first, you get a time T, which is the number of seconds since 1970, using the time function. Once you have that raw time, you can then pass it to a local time function that will convert it into a TM struct. That's how you get the time. Um, if you want to display the time, you have to use that struct by using its, the elements in the struct. Remember that year, you have to add 1900, and month, you have to add 1, because the month is zero-based, and the year is based off of 1900. Uh, if you want to get a, a time a u input of a date from a user and convert it into a TM, you have to do, you, don't forget to call make time to, to fix your TM struct. And then, you know, m many of the operations you do when you're doing calculations between dates, you're often going to convert your struct back into a time t and then do your math based on the number of seconds. So that completes uh, my presentation on time. Thank you very much.